So I got a phone call from Chase on Friday saying, Hi Spindle, my clutch is slipping and I need the car on Tuesday. So here we are, Sunday morning, doing the clutch. Thanks Chase. To change the clutch, we need to get the gearbox out, which means taking off a few other parts first. So I'm gonna remove the exhaust, just disconnect it at the front here, drop the whole thing down so it's out of the way. These shields have got to come off so I can get the prop down out of the way. Then I will support the gearbox, remove the mount, and then I'll be able to bring the gearbox down. Um, oh, the only other thing I need to do is disconnect the gear linkage at the top, because otherwise we'll probably try and rip the gear stick through the floor, which is not a good idea. Don't think Chase will be happy with that. So I'm gonna do that, and then we'll go on a bit further once I've got to taking the gearbox out. Whenever I'm putting a stand underneath a gearbox or even a engine on the sump, I always put a bit of wood there. It just gives something a bit softer to go between the hard metal of the jack and the soft aluminium of the casing so you don't cause any damage. So if you're ever going to support anything, stick a bit of wood between it. Okay, so you need to disconnect the gear stick from the gearbox, which this one's a little bit more simple than a standard one because we've got an aftermarket shifter in here. So all we're using is the one rod. So we just need to undo this clip here. Easier said than done, apparently. It's gonna be in power clips. Right, so that clip there, and then you can just slide the shaft out. On the standard one, you also have some other guides that come down here to the shifter, which you'll need to undo from the gearbox as well. And then there's the plugs for the reverse, reverse light switch. Because you don't want to be pulling on them when you drop the gearbox out. So you just undo them, it's just two spade terminals, and that's them done. Okay, so now we've got the gearbox off, you can see the flywheel and the clutch, and we can also see a lot of the fluid that is causing the issue. Uh, just for those who don't know, this is a clutch pressure plate. The clutch disc sits inside there, which you'll, you'll see when I take it all apart, and this is the flywheel. So you've got the flywheel butt with the engine, and then the disc and the pressure plate compresses the disc. 
Uh, it looks like the fluid is actually coming from the gearbox rather than the main oil seal, which is good since we had this engine rebuilt. It'd be a bit disappointing if that seal had gone within the 5,000 miles it's done. So I'm now gonna strip this all off just to double check that seal at the back. And then we'll also show you a brand new clutch and the separate components and the inside of the bell housing on the gearbox so that you can see what's going on there. Okay, so now we're looking inside the bell housing of the gearbox from the E30. Uh, you can see all the fluid that's caused the issue with the clutch. Just thought I'd go through a few of the bits on this as I take it apart. So you've got the clutch release bearing and the arm that pushes it. I'm not 100% sure of the technical name for it, but when you press the clutch pedal, the hydraulic fluid comes down to the slave cylinder, moves this out, which moves the clutch release bearing out, disengages the clutch so you can then change the gear without the drive going through to the engine. So we're gonna take this out, this simply pulls off. And this arm has some little clips at the back. <laughs> so that's the arm, the little clip that we're not gonna lose this time. And now you can see a bit of a mess in there. There's a seal behind this plate which is held in with uh, six bolts. So I'm just gonna take those bolts out. Okay, so now I've got this plate off. This is where the seal sits that we're replacing. And just so you can see, the fluid has been leaking out the bottom here, coming through and then getting onto the clutch, which has caused our issue. So we need to replace the seal in here. I'm gonna clean this all up, put it all back together, and then we'll move on to putting the new clutch in. Okay, so we're gonna get the seal out. Got a removal tool here. Looks That's it. there. there you go, yeah. Got a removal tool here. <laughs> uh, this hooks in and just pulls the seal out. I also don't really want to be stabbing it into my wrist. There we go. So it just pulls it out like that. So this is the old seal that we're going to replace. Can't actually see where it's gone, but it is definitely leaking. And we've got a new one here. So we're going to press this one in after giving this a clean up and the next will go back together. So I think we found the cause of the issue here. Uh, a year or so ago when we rebuilt the car, Chase actually had the gearbox aqua blasted just to get it all nice and clean because it was filthy. And it looks like during the aqua blasting, some of the uh, micro granules have got in and yep. caused the issue. So we're gonna clean all these out before we push a new seal in, make sure there's no sign of these whatsoever and then we shouldn't have the problem again. So any of you getting stuff aqua blasted, make sure you don't do what we do and give it a good thorough clean. What is that, brake cleaner? Yeah, it's just clutch and brake cleaner, which is pretty good at cleaning anything you're doing on the car. Just if you do use it, be very careful because it is extremely flammable as I discovered when I set fire to my beard. So yeah, just give it a thorough rinse out this is an old toothbrush, not my current one. So it's always handy to keep hold of them because you can use them for things like this. Just make sure you get all of that stuff out because I don't want to be doing this on a Sunday again or, or a weekday to be fair, any day. All right, just gotta get this standy blade and get rid of all this silicon. So you gotta be careful with standing blade not to score any flat surfaces if they are surfaces that seal up, although silicon should take that up, but it's always best to not give any extra reasons for things to leak. So just be careful you don't dig into things. I'm just getting all the old stuff out. Another thing to mention, I've clamped this into the vise, but I've used uh, these rubber feet because I don't want to damage the shaft that the release bearing slides up and down otherwise it could give a bit of a 
jerky issue with the clutch so always be careful when you're using soft materials and clamping them right you don't need to really wash the clutch and brake cleaner off because it does dissolve really quickly so as long as you've got all the debris out of the way you can just let it dry in the air it only takes a few seconds Also another tip, cover your eyes because you don't want clutch and brake cleaning your eyes because that hurts too. Okay, so when you're putting these seals in, obviously pay attention to what way round the old one came out because you don't want to put it in the wrong way round. They have a, a little lip in here. A lot of them now have a dual lip, which is just sitting right. inside here. And that's what seals on the shaft that moves around inside. You also, when you're hammering them in, make sure you push on this outside edge because that is the metal area, not this inside edge. As that's a rubber area, you'll damage it, you'll put it all back together and I promise you it will leak straight away. So you want to get them in square, so just seat it in as far as you can by your fingers. Find a socket that fits the outside edge of it. You're right going a little bit over the size of it because you generally just hammer them flush with the material that you're putting them into. You should just be able to gently tap it in Just paying attention that it's going in as evenly as you can get it. Just tapping it till the end of it is smooth with the face of the recess that you're actually fitting it into. They go in dry, you're not actually supposed to use. <laughs> that was a perfectly innocent explanation. So always put it in dry, just make sure it's clean. There's no little bits of debris or lumps or bumps of silicon, etc. And then just make sure that you've got it sitting flat because the squarer it is, the more likely you are to have done it properly and have a seal in there. Okay, so now I'm gonna clean out all of this. Um, just again, clutch and brake cleaner. Get all these little bits of stuff out. This oil needle needs to come out, otherwise that's going to contaminate the new clutch. Um, actually, contaminate. Contaminate. Yeah. yeah, it's a new word. You I like can, it. Yeah. Doesn't matter. It's going to hit the bearings. I'm going to try not to get it on the bearings, but no, because it dissolves really quickly, and I'm not going to blast it directly at them. So, going to use my toothbrush again. Also handy to use a paintbrush. Ideally not an old one because you don't want bits of paint, but if you can get yourself just some cheap brushes, always handy to have in the workshop for cleaning stuff like this up. You can see how well the aqua blasting has got this all up. Use the blade to get rid of this old silicon from around this hill. This little hole here is a breather hole that you line this notch up with so it stops any pressure build up where that seal is. So when we put it back on we've got to make sure that lines up with that bit. And so while you clean it up make sure that's clear because if that's blocked you could get an issue with it. Okay so I'm just cleaning all the old silicon that's in these threads. Just using a die from the tap and die set, it's the right size. So make sure it's the right pitch thread so you don't change your pitch on your bolts and then make it so you can't reuse them. Right, so make sure that this is all free from oil or grease or any contaminants because you need the new silicon to actually seal. And obviously if you put it on an oily surface, then it it's just not going to dry on that, you won't get a seal and it makes the whole job completely pointless. There's also this ring which came out, so I've got to make sure that goes back on there. So it just sits over there. 
obviously I'm going to have to try and get no silicon on that so it might not yeah it'd be better to sit in there I think okay so that will sit on there and again pay attention to this groove here needs to go where this breather hole here is right so gasket sealer so the best way to do this is to put some on make sure you don't put it where you don't want it and what we normally do is make sure you put some on there but don't go mad with it a few dots around a few bots dots and then rather than just putting it straight on like that you smudge it with your fingers and sort of pre-spread it around so it won't all go everywhere you want to try and have a continuous band around it this is just going to get anything that does get past that seal I've already got too much on there anyway now. and if you dab rather than smear it flat it tends to make a better seal so make sure you don't get any inside past this lip because you don't want any silicon going into where your bearing is so you don't want any really tall bits of it you're better off taking it back off than just sticking it on the car on the gearbox like that Right, so I'm going to put a little bit of grease on here just to try and hold that ring in place because I don't want that coming off, sitting in the wrong place or getting covered in silicon as it goes in. So I just press that down and that should hold this in place there. Just try and push it on square, otherwise that new seal that you've put on is going to have an issue. And that's it. Start with the bolts off by hand. You don't want any cross threading. When you're tightening these bolts up, try and do it in a, a star sort of pattern rather than just going round in a circle because it will then draw it on square, which again seals it up better. Don't go mad with these, uh, probably would do it by hand, but I've got my impact driver right here, so I'm gonna gently do it with that. Right, I'm gonna check all these by hand because I don't wanna pull the threads out. Just make sure they're nipped up because you don't want these working loose. Okay, so that's the seal sorted out, so that should be no more leaks. So we can, yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, so we can now get on with putting the new thrust bearing in and getting that ready to go on and then we'll change the clutch. Okay, so the new clutch kit is from LUK. There's quite a few different brands. This just happens to be the, the one that we got. It's just a completely standard clutch because it's not a performance engine so it doesn't need anything different so in the clutch kit generally you get they're called three piece clutch kits you get the new pressure plate it's nice and shiny and new you get the new clutch disc which is the bit that normally wears first so that the, probably the bit that's contaminated by the oil in this situation and you get the new thrust or release bearing, whichever you want to call it, which is the bit that we're now going to put back into the gearbox so that's ready to go in. Okay, so we're going to put the new bits back onto the gearbox. So first of all, tiny little bit of grease just on the shaft here. You don't want loads of it because you don't want it all spinning off all over the, the new clutch you're putting on. It's, it's just a little bit to, to help the the release bearing slide up and down there. So you use grease on the shaft to help with the release? Yep, that's it. Okay, so you got that sits back on there. You've got a little locating pin that pivots there, and the other bit will pivot onto the uh, clutch slave cylinder, which obviously isn't in there at the moment, so it's just going to sit there looking pretty loose. And this clip just clips back over. 
to keep it on there. Like that, and then you've got the bearing just slides over there. And there's a little flat on each side which lines up with the arm like that and then when you push your clutch pedal again it slides like that so we also put a little bit of grease on the splines because when we're putting the gearbox back in that just helps it go together without struggling too much again not loads because you don't want to contaminate your clutch Right, so we're going to take the old clutch off. So we've got to undo these 13 mil bolts here, and then we should best get it all off. So take these. It's held on with these dowels, so it can be a little bit tough to get off. So just need to give it a little pry. make sure you catch the pressure plate as it comes off okay so we can see here the marks I don't know if you can zoom in and get that but where it's gone shiny and it's a bit dark it kind of looks it just doesn't look right I'll show you compared to the new one in a bit um, we're gonna have to clean this up because the oil's got in there we just need to clean that up give it a little bit of a, a rough up it's still actually got the marks from when we fitted it Chase um, but yeah, the, you can tell that it is, is the oil contamination in it. It's not too bad because Chase actually noticed it pretty quickly and because he's got a long drive coming up in a couple of days, we decided to just get it done rather than risk him breaking down at the side of the road. So it's not too bad, but it's definitely got an issue. Okay, so we've got the old pressure plate and disc next to the new pressure plate and disc to try and show you the difference. It, you kind of need to look at them a bit to learn over time as to what you're looking for, but you can see on the screen that these two are a lot darker than these two. This has been contaminated. You can see it's, they kind of both look glazed where the oils got into it. And um, it's a lot darker and to feel it's actually very, very smooth. Whereas these ones, you can, they feel a bit more like a fine sandpaper. Um, and this is very, very shiny. That's the kind of things you're looking for. Generally, you'll know if it's oil contamination because there'll be oil everywhere as well. But as I said, we caught this pretty quick. So that's not like that the pressure plate this is the the contact part which obviously the disc slips like this um it's kind of got a mottled effect as well where it's been slipping and the oil's kind of heated up on it so these we are gonna get rid of and then these are the ones we're working with so these are brand new shouldn't be any issues with them the only thing you do need to do even if it doesn't look like it is use clutch and brake cleaner hence the name on the face there give it a bit of a scrub because you can quite a lot of them will come with like a packing film of oil on them just so they don't go rusty in on the shelves of the parts places so you just want to get rid of that otherwise you're instantly having an issue with your new clutch make sure that's clean right then we need to center the disc to the pressure plate the one thing to note, there's always a right and a wrong way to put the, the disc on. Generally they have something that says flywheel side or engine side. This one hasn't, but you, you just need to pay attention to the one you take off. I know that this one with the, the more pokey out bit here goes to the outside of the engine, so gearbox side, because otherwise this side wouldn't sit flush onto the flywheel. So it goes on that way around. Pokey out a bit. Pokey out a bit, all the technical terms in this one. Yep. Turn it around. Right, that needs to be centered on so that we know that it is centered to the pressure plate. And when we put it onto the gearbox, or when we put the gearbox onto this, your input shaft goes into those splines in the middle there. So you get this, this is just a universal tool. There's loads of different ones available. Uh, you just put it in there like that. And then you wind this down and it spreads out that bit at the bottom and locks the pressure plate to the disc and centers it up. So now it's all in one piece. 
ready to go on and you can see that it's centered perfectly to the pressure plate and that's ready to fit onto the flywheel but we've got to clean the flywheel up first okay so we're gonna clean the flywheel up so we need to clutch and brake clean it give it a bit of a scotch pad over just to give it a little bit of slightly grippier surface because we've got a new clutch going in and we're going to spray up behind this to get any of the oil that's gone behind there you can see some of it here so literally just give it a spray just use a bit of scotch paper try and do a half and half i don't know if it was sharp on the camera so you can see now the oil coming out where it's all dirty so definitely was the issue there you don't want to go mad because you don't want any deep grooves in there you just need to give it a little bit of a rough surface for the new pressure plate to push the disc onto and grip right i'm happy with that okay so putting the new clutch on is pretty simple you've got these dowels here there's three of them they line up with the big holes in the uh, new pressure plate so you put those on that lines it up and then you've got your bolts go back in if you get all of them in just finger tight and then you can torque them up they get torqued up to 24 newton meters on this engine and gearbox setup check your torque settings in your handbook or online there's lots of information out there depending on what engine you've got these ones are 24 newton meters which is not very much to be honest again if you tighten them up in a star pattern there's loads more on them i'm gonna cheat a little bit and do this tighten them up in the star pattern it just pulls it all on straight rather than just going one side and going round. You shouldn't need to lock the engine for this sort of torque. So once you've done all them, normally go around and check them all again just to be sure, which I'll do in a minute. Uh, you can just release the center tool and then you know that everything's lined up ready for your gearbox to go on. So you just watched us do a new clutch on this, uh, just taking it for a little test drive, it's all working out fine. So that's all done, dusted, nothing ticked off the box. New clutch, sorted out the oil leak, uh, gave it all a good clean up and all good to go. So Chase can now do his two or three hour drive to his tattoo guest spot with no problems. We haven't done a walk around on this yet, so a few probably gonna wanna see it after seeing a few little snippets of the outside so we will do a walk around of it soon to show you inside outside explain exactly what the whole point of this car is uh, but that is to come so keep watching cheers <laughs>